catch and release or hug a thug crime fighting strategy that seems to be uh, being passed by the legislature and encouraged by the governor. Um, well, Reset, talk to us about this legislation, the aspects of it that you don't like and how you think it's going to impact us and why. Okay, well I'm going to go back further than this legislation. Okay. I want to go back to about 2007. Uh, my friend, uh, with whom I just disagree on this issue, Bob Lawson, he's a professor at the University of Kentucky College of Law, wrote an article about, um, I don't know what the title of it was, but it basically had to do with the cost of incarceration and that we can't afford to incarcerate as many people as we are. Well, the legislature picked up on this and they enacted some, um, they didn't enact laws, they enacted the budget. In the budget, which doesn't require deb public debate, they, they ease the, the manner by which people are paroled they reduced the limitations on that. So instead of getting it uh, passed as a law, they just administratively said... Well, no, they put, they put the language in the budget and then everybody just votes for the budget without debating <laughs> the issues of, of the len uh, leniency of parole guidelines. Gotcha. Okay, then at the same time, uh, judges were discouraged from sending what we call nonviolent property offenders to prison in the first place. <clears throat> they say because it costs too much. Uh, so that's what started to happen. They started pushing these people out of the prison system back in 2007, 2008, up until up till today. And the judges began not sending people to prison who committed what we call nonviolent property offenses. Then they got this Pew organization in Washington, D.C., which is traditionally an anti-punishment, has an anti-punishment philosophy, too many people in prison kind of thing. They got them involved in helping them redesign and make changes in our criminal laws that will basically not send so many people to prison. And so you know, what's happened is violent, let's go back to this issue. Remember, uh, first offenders almost never go to prison anyway. We've talked about this. And 5% of the criminals commit the vast majority of the crime, somewhere around 80%, uh, criminologists tell us. <clears throat> so what's happened was that the five percenters were sent to prison. Now they're being pushed out and now people are not being sent. So what's happened? Violent criminals remain in prison and the violent crime rate continues to drop. What's been going on with the nonviolent property offenses? And that includes burglaries, it includes breaking into cars, it includes stealing cars, it includes all this shoplifting, which by the way, in the last, since the first of the 2011 has quadrupled um, so what's happened it is... It certain drug possession too, right? Well, we haven't even gotten to that part yet. Um, but, but I'm talking about the nonviolent property okay. offenses that affect... All of us. Well, sure. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what we know is about 12.5% of the crime that occurs in Lexington is violent crime. 88.5% mm -hmm. is what, we call, what they call nonviolent property crime for which they should be left on the street on probation or parole you see so and and we have to say that the people that commit the the property crimes are the most prolific uh, these, these are these these are people that will recommit and recommit and recommit in fact they're only the only time they're not committing property crimes is when they're in jail that we know we know as, as law enforcement officials that's just how it is the property criminals are the are the repeat offenders that we have to deal they, with. They make their living. Here's uh -huh. the difference. They make their living committing crimes. Violent offenders, which need to be thrown in prison, some of them need to be executed, they need to be punished, 
but most of those offenders don't necessarily make their living committing crimes. Their crimes are committed during some of the lesser crimes, like property mm -hmm. crimes, whatever. But you have to remember, basically, they're, they're telling these people who make their living committing crimes that there's not going to be punishment anymore, sufficient to fit the crime. There's almost zero chance of that happening. It's the, it, <clears throat> you know better than I know, because you are been in the law enforcement business for two, three hundred years. Mm -hmm. uh, these people f operate, these repeat offenders, repeat property offenders, operate on this concept that if they think they're going to get caught, and they think they're going to get punished, both, then they don't do it. But if they don't think they're going to get caught, and if they do get caught, they're not going to get punished, then they have no expectation of punishment, and there's nothing to deter them from doing it. That's where we are now. Well, we know they manage their risk, and I, I was in the burglary unit for, for uh, years, and I can tell you that that uh, these burglars have an understanding of what things are actually going to go to prison for. For instance, a lot of burglars who are professionals will go into your home and they may avoid uh, stealing a gun because they know that that enhances the penalties. And so there are some burglars that they're like, you know what, I, well, I'm, I'm not going to steal a gun because it will actually get me in, in more trouble. But they're still willing to break into your house because they understand that they're not going to go to prison for that. They're really, they really don't stand much of a chance at all of facing any real prison time for breaking into your home. And if they do, how many burglaries will they commit before they get caught? A couple of hundred? How much money will they make? They make $1,000 on each burglary. They've made $200,000 in the course of a year committing burglaries. So they'll, they'll do three months in jail for that. They'll, they'll take a little summer break if they get caught. Well, That's how they, they manage their risk. We but, know but, they do. But Officer Don, we're now in the business of that's burglary is classified by our legislature and the governor as a nonviolent property Somebody offense. Somebody who, who kicks your door in and comes into your home and steals your stuff while you're home or away or what, that is a nonviolent offender. And I'm telling you, that person, if someone right now kicks your door in and steals your stuff, they are not going to go to prison for any time at all. Well, I mean, they might, but the chances I, uh, are very that's slim. That's why I qualify it. Very, very slim, and, and it's not going to be for any significant time period at all. That's just how, and it's just gotten worse. Now, uh, people that at least the police officers could arrest and get off the street can't even be arrested for some of these crimes, yep. like breaking into your car, or shoplifting, or peeping into your daughter's window. Things like that, they can't even be arrested for that by the police. That's where we're at. They got to write them a ticket. Are they nuts? Well, the the bottom line is, is today is kickoff day for this new law. We haven't even gotten into the drug component of that, and we'll do that probably next week mm -hmm. because it's it's uh, it's a subject in and of itself. Uh, basically drug possession has been decriminalized because the first time a person is charged with a possession uh, drug I mean a, a possession charge for drugs they have they get what they call deferred prosecution uh, for, two, for, for two years and then if they violate the conditions of that then they go into something called uh, presumptive probation presumptive probation. That means that they're presumed, they're presumed to be probated and we have to go through all sorts of hoops to try to get them uh, sentenced. Well, Tune in to the following stations every Sunday to hear In Touch with Ray the DA and Officer Don. We hope you enjoyed the show. Stay tuned in for next week's episode.